The regional cooperation in Sangre Grande is chaired by Councillor uh, Mr. Martin Terry Rondon. Mr. Rondon, thank you so much for joining us. A very good morning to you. A pleasant morning to you and your listeners. It is good to have you here this morning. I know it is it's a challenge for you to get down here because you've got a lot of work of your constituents that you are working on, but I appreciate that you take the time to be with us via the telephone. A number of roofs were blown off in your area. Some damage took place in Sangre Grande. Could you give us an idea as to the extent of the damage, sir? All right. Let me first say thanks to the Almighty God. We didn't have any, any disaster in the Toko area. Indeed. Toko area. We have minor, minor um, repairs to do in this area, but in Sandy Grande, Komoto, Valencia, and Vega, Plamita, you know, we have we have a total of 35 roof off. We had a lot of flooding. We have a lot of um, trees that fall, livestock that, you know, we lost and plus produce a lot, a lot, a lot of tomatoes, sweet pepper, short crop. So we had damage in the agricultural area. I do need to, I need to ask this of you, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, what more, or how equipped, how prepared was the corporation for a situation like this? And what more can be done to better equip um, corporations, specifically the Sangre Grande Regional Corporations in case like this? Well, let me start with what could be done. And what could be done must be done by the residents of their own cells. Mm. A lot of people built on the river bank. A lot of people know that there's flood in that area, but they go and build because <laughs> they don't want to go to the right channel. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing on the regional cooperation in assisting these people. And the people who really and truly in need and who is legal always have problems in getting their road or their, their crops or compensation for their roof. So, so this is the problem we have in, and we try our best to prepare. But how prepared you could be in time of disaster? You could do all what you want. We put trucks in place. We have drivers. Some of the drivers are, themselves have to run back home. Mm -hmm. Very well flood. Right? <laughs> we, food stuff. We can't have enough food stuff. We have problem with people who claiming that they lost. Y and Z, and Mr. Bishop, when you visit them, they can't show you what you lost. Mm -hmm. I am a strong 24 years. I celebrated 24 years to the other counselor. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I know the tricks of some people. I can tell you that. There, so, is one, there is one constant that has gone on here from the mayor of San Fernando to the mayor of Chaguanas and now to you, the chairman of the San Grande Regional Corporation. That question of folks who are building, I ask of the, the two preceding mayors, what can be done because it falls into the municipal police, the, the police under their, uh, 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 under their control. What can be done in your area, San Grande, as far as enforcing and dealing with people who are building on these banks because they are not only, they create a problem for for the area in general, everybody suffers as a consequence of folks who are there. Whether there is a merit or the merits or demerits of their being there is not so much the issue. The fact is, what happens at the end of a, a, an event like this is that everyone suffers. What can be done by the Sangre Grande Regi Regional Corporation to dissuade and or remove uh, people, charge them if it were, if it, if it became necessary, uh, those who are flouting the regulations? Well, what I suggest is that we enforce the law. But part of that law that we want to enforce, it does not lie with the regional corporation. Mm. The regional corporation at times are facilitators. You see, like time now, we have to get mattress, we have to get bleach, we have to get rope, we have to get everything for the people. But we are not, we have the autonomy to pass the law. Mm. That's it. If you bill it, you've got to stop because they stop always for me. I tell you, I experienced in Valencia. I passed in the morning, there's an empty lot. And when I pass it back in the evening, curtains flying, radio playing, there's a house up. And when mm. you talk to the people, first thing they say about poor man. Mm. Poor man. And when the time reach for that, that poor man to get himself in the line of the disaster, he come back to you again and he used the word poor man. 
But with me, I don't think on the humanitarian, but it's unfair to the regional corporation. If you hear how they talk about chairman, they talk about conflict in a time like this, you will swear that they, they came by us and we authorized building. Mm -hmm. Mr. 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 I tell you, the law, we have to get serious. I call in all chairmen you know, and mayor. We have to get together and we have to sit down and push for, we have to push that we get the law right for people. Because I am telling you, I am seeing poor people, poor people suffering, people who really and truly need suffering. While the big fish, they get in everything because of who they know and who know them. The councillor uh, you're listening to is Mr. Martin Terry Rondon, chairman of the Sangre Grande Regional Corporation. The role played in, in, this, in, 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 in this problem is, is every year. Uh, how much of this is attributable to unplanned land clearance, which means the removal of top soil, and that erosion, as we know, contribute to a lot of flooding? To what role would you say that played in your area, sir? That is un unplanned. They have unplanned planned building constructions going on. Those developers, you know, they just come in, clear the area, they clear the area, and they put their, they start to do their structure. When the rain came, they just flood the poor people on the other side. Unplanned, unplanned. They, they never came to us. There's no paper saying we give them approval to do these, these, these um, um, constructions. Never, never. But this approval it, must come from the Sangre Grande Regional Corporation, am I correct? Many a time. Many a time they say, yes, we give them. Go and see. Tell them bring their documents. Tell them to bring their documents and you'll see. They cannot show where we give. We have a strong building committee, you know. We have a strong building committee. And with that, I go make sure I go through that thing. Find it, comb. I find it, comb and see where people, they go the right way. I went on a campaign after the December month and educated the people of Soko. That is why I love them so dearly. Do not build on Riverbank. Do not build on the hill. Mm -hmm. And they are scared to me. But we have the problem with the land developers. Mm -hmm. They come and they do their thing. And at the end of the day, poor people who is legal, you go into Sichara and you go into to Plumita and see people who live in there for years, legal, and see what's happening now. The, the, the house flooded out. The, the people are given mattress now. Never ask me for a mattress. Never ask me yes. for their furniture or anything. They have to go through with tears in the eyes. They ask me, Mr. Rondon, what you could do. Who could I turn to? More than ask the government enforce the laws. We but have to be serious. Mr. Rondon, you said that a lot of these folks are doing the illegal uh, the, the developers illegally um, putting up their structures because they did not get approval from you. Why is it then? Uh, why is it then that you cannot um, take action against these folks if they cannot provide the necessary documentation or approval? Mr. Bishop, if we will show to the nation that certificate to these people. But the right of this is the Commissioner of State Land. Mm. The Commission is so much of bureaucracy in this beloved country here that, you know, at times, as always say, the bureaucracy always falls in the lap of the poor man. Mm. It's plenty thing to get around, you know. It's plenty thing, you know. When you show that, show cause notice. You're asking the police person why you should bail. Bam! The person sent a letter from his or her lawyer, and they're giving you, telling you, well, they're going to do it from town and country. Then you will get a letter again, and you're going wrong. When you finish with them, you're tired. All the time, they adding on, adding on, adding on, and make you the counselor who have the heart. All counselors and chairmen and they have the heart for the people, you know. But they make us look so silly. Mm. And you say, you turn your back. I tell you, though, I really see it in my life. I'm ready to turn away from some of those people because they are taking advantage on our kind. 
Well, in other words, we are saying that the Commission of State Land has to be doing a better coordinating job, working together, cooperative um, action uh, with the uh, regional corporation to put an end to this. Because on the one hand, if all you can do is say, I did not give you permission, you can prove I did not give you permission, and the prison go past you, go somewhere else, buy time and continue what they're doing anyway. And then we have a situation like happened with this storm, and everyone is going to suffer for it. Um, uh, we may want to be asking some questions from the Commission of State Lands. The majority of claims we have in, I don't call them squatters, you know, I say unfortunate people who can buy a piece of land and they put up a house, but the majority of claims that we are having is from these people hmm. because they put up a structure, they're not putting gutter in on their roof, they're not putting up a drain, and they just put up a structure and they decide to live. And that is the cry. That is the cry. I can tell you that is the cry. One it's cannot be uncharitable. One cannot be uncharitable. So you want to be uh, uh, your humanitarian spirit to work when you see folks in such yeah. dire straits. But unless something is done to dis discourage this or to regularize this situation, everyone yeah. will get on television. Everyone will cry bloody murder. And everyone will uh, want assistance while it is to the dislocation of everyone else. Yeah, I know in my area. Yeah, and it has some... People who they insult me in languages towards me. For what? Because I decide to go the right way. Mm. I no longer. And before you leave, before I leave this on the air, I wanted to make it quite clear with the Ministry of Education and let the government know that this thing that they're talking about, shelters, shelters, mm -hmm. the schools, I can tell you, I just had an experience in Valencia South School. They declared a shelter. I put people in that in that school. But the, lucky for me, the day after, they declared a holiday for the school. But mm. the next children have to go to school. Mm. I had 26 families inside that school. Principal calling, supervisor calling, parents calling, me. We have to move the people out. Thank God the Adventist Church take these people. I want same thing with community center. It happened right in Matlab here. Mm -hmm. Village Council feel they own the center. They refuse to open the community center because they feel they're in charge. And then where we put in people, I ask the government make designate shelters in areas that that is for disaster victims to put on and stop in embarrassing poor people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you feel with our eight children to come out of that place, I feel hurt for them. And principal saying they want their school, village Congo saying they want their community center. Where are the people going? Yes. And there's big talk from ODPM. This is a designated shelter. This is a designated shelter. We have to stop that. We have to stop that and prepare, you know, we're getting warning after warning. We have to prepare better for the people that belongs to us here. Better, a this? better action coming out of the Commission of State Land, better coordination with the ODPM, the, uh, and, and, and if we have that happening, uh, then we can get ourselves in a position where we can prepare as best we can for, 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 for the next uh, tropical depression or net tropical storm that comes to the country. Uh, Council, Councilman uh, Mr. Martin Terry Rondon, who is the chairman of the San Grande Regional Corporation, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning, sir. Thank you, and any time you feel free, come to Toko. Come and enjoy the hospitality that we have to offer in Toko, man. I told we you that I'll, I, I'll pick you up on that one, but keep the wild meat. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from the wild meat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. You have yourself a wonderful day.